So for those asking how to land a high paying cybersecurity job, listen up. I'm going to share the exact roadmap that I would take to break into this industry and even without having any prior experience. So you don't need experience, but you do need to put in the work. So if you are serious about breaking into this industry, then buckle up because we are going to run through a lot today. I've got water here. I've got my lip gloss here, which by the way, is a new lifter gloss and it's one of the newer ones. It's the bubblegum one. It looks so good. I was so shocked and surprised because it's, it's like not even that pigmented anyway. Some of the things we're going to run through today is the mindset and prereqs for transitioning into cybersecurity. That's super, super important. Where to start by actually like establishing the core baseline from a knowledge perspective. And then how do you reinforce that knowledge and get through some of the actual requirements for gaining practical and hands-on skills. And then what are some of the projects that you can do, the key certifications to target, and why those certifications are actually going to matter on your journey. Then we're going to cover how to optimize putting out the information that you've done as part of your projects, the LinkedIn journey, and then maybe some other stuff towards the end. So definitely buckle up, stay tuned. This is going to be a long one, but I promise you in the end, it's going to be comprehensive and it's really going to help you on this journey towards cybersecurity. Now, with over 3 million, I mean, I think it's 4 million by now, open cybersecurity jobs globally, it's expected to vastly increase by 2025, but the demand is massive and the massive demand really outspaces the supply that we have. But don't let this intimidate you, right? Because now there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of people that's trying to get a foot in the door in cybersecurity, but that doesn't mean that there's no space for you. Companies are always having shortages and they're really eager and looking to hire the right person that has the right capabilities, aptitude, skills. And if that's you, you can get your foot into the door in the next six to 12 months in cybersecurity. Now, first, before we dive in, let's talk about this that I've mentioned, having the right aptitude, because I've recently seen this TikTok about someone saying how hard it is to be in cybersecurity and nobody will hold your hand and you won't get any help, etc. Now, it's not that you won't get any help, but no one will hold your hand. That might sound really harsh, but when you enter the industry, you're definitely going to be learning from a lot of other people in this industry. But that doesn't mean that people are going to hold your hand. Like if you want to get into cybersecurity, you need to be self-determined. You need to be determined to succeed. You need to be motivated and you need to be able to learn on your own and you need to have that self-drive because that's absolutely important. So I'm just putting that out there so that you know what to expect. It's not like nobody's going to come and tell you that you must learn this and you must gain this skill or this is how you must do this thing. Cybersecurity is very much about your ability to be self-driven and self-motivated. And so if you expect someone to hold your hand, that's not going to happen. And employers are not looking for someone who expects someone to hold their hand. So where do we start? Firstly, you need to start with establishing the core knowledge components. Now, there are some free and low cost platforms that I've used in my career that has really helped me to discover this industry and learn what cybersecurity is all about. Before you even dive into the industry, it's really important that you get an understanding of what cybersecurity is about, what the domains are in cybersecurity, especially if you have no idea and you're starting from zero experience like I'm trying to help you cover in this video. Now, one of the key platforms that I have used to gain clarity about what cybersecurity is all about is definitely Cyberary. There is the intro to cybersecurity. It's a very short, like 45 minutes or an hour training on there that actually just introduces you into what cybersecurity is all about, the different domains, the different areas, and the different kind of jobs and roles that you can get in cybersecurity. That is absolutely crucial because it's going to give you the overview of where you can start and what might interest you. Next up, you have to learn some of the basic fundamentals. This is operating systems, Windows, Linux, Mac. You need to know how a computer works, right? For you to be able to work in cybersecurity. Then you are going to need some networking skills. 
Networking skills is really like one of, I would say the most complex things really for most people, like a lot of people struggle when it comes to getting networking skill, but there is a lot of free training on Cyberary as well, as well as on YouTube on how you can get free network training. And if you follow something like the Network Plus program by Professor Messer here on YouTube, that will give you a great overview of what networking is all about. But Ultimately, in this step, you can use Cyberary. You don't have to pay for it. I know a lot of people say it's not free, it's not free, but I personally have never paid for Cyberary. So it depends what you want to do on there. It's definitely worth it. I mean, if you want to pay for it, great. Go ahead. It's definitely worth it. Next up, there are so many platforms where you can get actual hands-on skills. But I've seen people get so flustered when I share all the options of platforms to get hands-on skills. So in this video, I'm going to streamline it a little bit and I'm going to stick to my top two recommended platforms that I've personally used and that has helped me tremendously in my career. So if you want to see the full video on different platforms that you can use to get hands-on practice, then definitely leave a note down in the comments and I'm happy to share that with you. But for now, I'm going to stick to two. And the first one that I suggest that you look into is Hack the Box, the Hack the Box Academy. It has beginner labs, I think over 80 something like labs where you can really get hands on skills and hands on practice. And the second one is Try Hack Me's pre-security path, which really eases you in gently into the world of cybersecurity. So that's really for, I would say Try Hack Me is for like if you have just finished the one course on Cyberary, you haven't done any other courses, then you go to the pre-security path on Try Hack Me, that is a killer combo. Or if you are slightly more inclined and you already have some sort of technical skills, then you can likely go and start on Hack the Box. Now I will say that if you have the right aptitude for cybersecurity, it's going to be fun playing on these platforms, right? And learning all these new skills and kind of getting the knowledge is going to be a fun exercise. And that's important. It has to be fun for you. If you want to learn and you want to thrive in the industry, it has to be something that's fun for you. And I'll touch on why that is a little bit later on. But next, you're going to want to touch up your skills that you've been learning on these kind of simulation platforms and kind of training platforms. You're going to want to dive in deeper and actually build your own projects and build your own labs. Now, this is for a couple of reasons. A home lab is really important to show an employer your autonomy in being able to firstly provision a machine, install an operating system on a machine, connect that machine to the network, and then of course run different security tools on that. To build a home lab, it's super simple. You can build it on your own computer or you can even build it in a cloud environment, but you can use something like VirtualBox to build your own computer and then you can practice multiple kind of security attacks. So one of the attacks you can practice is if you install a virtual machine but it's kind of vulnerable then you can use something like a SQL injection against this vulnerable VM. You can record all of that and then you can do like a write-up of what happened and how you were able to exploit this vulnerability. Then the other useful things is if you install Wireshark, you can do it for deep packet analysis and you can kind of explain the work through of your understanding of the packet and the information that you see there that's super critical on the network side. Then you can use Burp Suite for web applications. You can use InMap. You can use Metasploit. I mean, there are so many things that you can do and you can document this, but that's the key word, documenting. Documenting this extensively. I mean, you need to really be extensive in your documentation if you want to get the benefit of why you built this lab, why you're running this project, and to showcase employers your potential in terms of deploying technical components and then exploiting them in the cybersecurity world. Now, I do appreciate what I'm sharing in this video mainly covers the, some of the technical side of cybersecurity. So this could be for cloud security analysts, cybersecurity analyst or cybersecurity engineer or an ethical hacker. If you want to know specific paths for different types of roles, like non-technical, like GRC, for example, definitely leave a comment down below and I will try and make a similar video about that. Moving to the next step, you will need to earn some of the respected certifications and qualifications to get you over the line of getting employed. Don't get me wrong. These are not actually like a core requirement, but they do help in the process of HR and gatekeeping in the industry. 
first step, most common, most resources available. You can go for this one as soon as you start building skills, start learning the theory of Security Plus. It really just establishes kind of your baseline of knowledge in many different domains in cybersecurity, but it is very, very theoretical. And I've shared a bunch of resources. I have a full video on Security Plus, so feel free to check that out. Then there is also the CASP. This dives deeper technically. So if you're on the advanced technical skilling level, then definitely go for that. If you are looking for alternatives to Security Plus, you can also look at the Google certification programs or certificate program. It's not a certification, it's a certificate or the ISC squared certified in cybersecurity. But you can do these certifications in six months while you're still working on the relevant projects where you are building skills. And it's actually kind of important to do these things in parallel because as you're learning theoretical knowledge, you're also gaining skills. And then this kind of streamlines your time frame of getting into the industry, but it also solidifies your knowledge on both sides. And so that's what I would be doing. If I was starting, that's exactly what I would be doing. I'd be on Try Hack Me or Hack the Box, and I would be studying for my Security Plus with Jason Dion or with Professor Messer. All of the resources is shared in my Security Plus video, but these are the two things that I'd be doing in parallel. And if you've already done the ISC squared certified in cybersecurity, then I don't think that you should also go for the Security Plus. In my opinion, I think you should go for skills and then a certification that's a bit more advanced like the CASP or if you're looking to dive into cloud, then look into that space of things. But don't repeat beginner level or the same level certifications. Now, it's time to spruce up your LinkedIn and to highlight your wins. So, for six months now, you've been practicing and practicing and you've been gaining skills and you've got certifications and you have hands-on practice and you've recorded your projects, you've documented them either online, in GitHub, on social media, on YouTube, wherever you've decided to document them. Now is the time to start sharing these things and sharing your insights from what you've gained and experienced. A lot of people ask me what to share on LinkedIn for cybersecurity. And the thing is, what you want to share is, yes, you want to reshare other people's posts and comments on their posts, of course, with insightful comments, because this gives you more visibility on the platform. However, what you also want to do is share your own knowledge. So if you have discovered something, figured something out, read something insightful, give a take on what you think about what you've read, what you've found, what you've built. Because this gives employers kind of the sense that you can hold your own, you can write your own things in the industry, you can share your knowledge and the person who shares their knowledge gives a teaching aspect and a teaching ability to them, which means that they are open to learning more and gaining more from others. And this will ring through in when you're sharing your knowledge with other professionals on LinkedIn, as well as do the dual thing of getting you out there, getting you visible and getting employers to start running to you. Now, this can be one of the hardest things is to find the actual job and to start applying for job applications. I have created a free job application guide and resume template, which I will link down below. But basically, this is just a starting point to help you out on how to list your skills on your resume, list your learnings, list your projects, especially if you have no real world cybersecurity experience. Next up, you might want to go and watch this video where I talk about how I passed the CompTIA Security Plus certification and I share all of the resources. Or maybe you want to check this one where I talk about the ISC Squared certified in cybersecurity. But that is it for this video. I hope you found it helpful, informative and comment if you did. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>